So here I am in Autodesk Revit 2016, and up to this point, you've learned the definition behind what is interference detection. You have learned the workflow thinking behind interference detection. And now let's focus in on where and when interference checking is used within the software. I have a drafting view open with a few images here to help you understand. And there may be an instance, for example, where you would use it where ductwork is crossing and intersecting structural elements here. You may have an instance where you have structural elements connecting and hitting against piping. Or you may have architectural elements that are interfering with structural elements here as well. So let's look at this in the actual Revit 3D model instead of the drafting view. If I'm over here in the quick access toolbar and I click the house symbol to get to the default 3D view, it opens up for me. I can also go to the view tab of the ribbon, go to the create panel, and click the house symbol for the 3D view to get to the default 3D view called bracket 3D bracket, which you'll see here in the project browser. Now at first glance, you're trying to understand where are all these collisions and interferences. Earlier we talked about how the possible workflows are in regards to creating the Revit model. For this, if I go ahead and turn on the reveal hidden elements command to see if there are any objects that are hidden, it'll give me this object here that's the linked Revit model. This is the architectural model that's um, selected and I can actually unhide the element by clicking unhide element here in the contextual command under reveal hidden elements. This will unhide the object and when I'm finished I can click anywhere into space to deselect any objects and then again clicking that icon for closing reveal hidden elements. This will give you a little bit of an indication as to how this model was set up and this model was set up such that you have uh, a model linked into this model. So how do we go about looking at where we have conditions that are interfering, if you will, before we actually run the collision detection or the interference checking? Some people actually use that uh, term interchangeably. So if I select, for example, this roof, and I can actually hide it. So if I right click it, I can hide in view and click element. This will hide any object that you have selected or objects that you have selected. And now we can kind of peruse the model. So here's a good example where we have flexible ductwork hitting this structural element. And so this is a good example of where you would want to run the interference checking to avoid situations like this. And here as well, here as well. And so in this particular model, there are a lot of locations where Whoever did the MEP model didn't take into account the clearances necessary for the structural elements. When we look at it from the standpoint of, say, architectural objects against structural objects, if I take this low basic foundation wall here and select it, and then right click and hide that object as well, we can kind of look and see what's going on. Let's go ahead and hide this exterior wall as well by left clicking it to select it, right click it, hide in view, element, or category. And if you choose category, all objects of that category will also hide. Now, if you can see here, whoever built this structural slab, foundation slab took into account that this column is going all the way through so they created this little notch to allow for that, which is good, it's smart, if that's the design that they intended. However, if you noticed earlier, when we looked at that foundation slat wall, let's go ahead and use this command again and unhide the elements and categories and then turn off that feature. If I select that foundation wall again, you're going to notice that that wall is right in line with that column and the edge of that floor. And so that would also be considered a conflict. 
So the question really at this point for this particular aspect of the course is the question, where and when do we use interference checking? Well, we can use the interference checking wherever we see these areas of concern. Uh, anywhere that there's a conflict with one object against another object. Here's another example. When do we use interference checking? Whenever we want. We can actually use the software and that feature early on in the design stage process during, say, sch schematic design. We can use it during design development. We can use it during construction documentation as well. Initially, we would like to try to make sure that all of our interferences are resolved before we even get to the CD level, if you will. Lastly, in the software, if you head over to the Manage tab of the ribbon, there is an inquiry tab uh, panel here. And in there, there's a command called warnings. And if I click it, it will automatically open up the warnings window and give me immediate warning issues um, within the model, like what's going on, there's something going on here. So I can actually select a particular object and click show. And it will automatically toggle between one view and another to help you look at the object to get a better view of what's causing the conflict or the issue. And you may have to click show several times to find what the conflict is and what's going on. So here it's saying coping applied but no cut was made. And so here's a this feature called warnings if you will. Gives you the ability to kind of initially get an idea of where the interferences may be. And with that we'll ha we have a better understanding now of where and when interference checking is used in the Revit software. In the next module, we'll focus in on the actual running of an interference check and understand the actual tool.